everybody. Yep, thanks for coming here today. So, uh, can you actually see what is behind me? Uh, okay, so I'm Phạm Phi Hoàng, just call me Harry. And currently, I'm a front end developer at Argo Merchant. And today, because it is Singapore ZS, so I'm going to talk about the JavaScript asynchronous code. So, uh, the agenda of this talk is how we're going to deal with asynchronous code in JavaScript. Uh, how many people in here know about code back in JavaScript? Can you raise your hand? Uh, how many people know about promise button in JavaScript? And how many people know about a sin away? Okay, so why we need uh, a synchronous code in JavaScript? Because JavaScript is a single thread language. It means it only get a single code stack, and it can only do one thing at one time. Because of that, if you do too much thing in JavaScript, it's gonna block the browser, and it's gonna hang the browser, and as a result, we got a very laggy UI. For example, I will just run a little innocent code in JavaScript. Really simple Fibonacci for a value like 20, it should be 5. But let's say if I increase it to 42, 42, it's gonna hang the browser you see here. Because JavaScript is only one single thread. Uh, in that case, let's say if we do try to call a request in HTTP or load the image, it's gonna block the thread and the user get a very bad user experience because everything is blocked. That's why we have to make a synchronous code in JavaScript. And to do that, we have to use code back. And that's the easiest way to make a synchronous code in JavaScript. So it's an innocent code back. I, I guess many people know about code back already. So I just try to repeat it again. <laughs> uh, in JavaScript, function our first class object. So function is also an object. And then a function can be passed as an argument <laughs> to another function. And the passed argument can later be executed. The sample code is this one. It's a really easy z query. Say the document ready, it takes in a callback, it is a function. And when you click on a button, it also takes another callback. This one is a guess decent. So when we try to make a call request to a network, we're gonna make a callback after the data if it returns. So it's not gonna block the JavaScript threads. I make a simple one with z query. So when you click this button, it's gonna call and get a bit of the cat. And the code is why symbol we call the JavaScript get. And on the callback, when we got the data, we make the callback to the image URL. And then in here, we just set the attribute to the URL. And in this way, you see why I clicked in this one, the UI is not blocked with the callback. So the callback solved the problem with a synchronous call. But why we don't use this? Because of the reason. It's called the callback hell. Uh, when you try to do the callback and you want to continue sequentially, you have to wait for the first thing to be done and you get put in another callback. And if you put many callback, you got something called callback hell. And it's really horrible, not from the code point of view, but when you try to debug or when you try to lock something and when you try to cut the errors, it's very tedious. So I got another example. This is a callback hell. So so let's say in my case, I don't want to just load one cat, but uh, I want to load one cat, one dog, and one fish, and sequentially. So you see here, if I want to do it sequentially, the code looks a little horrible. I have to put a cone back here, and after I find the image of the dog, I have to put another cone back. And after I set it, I have to put another cone back when I get the fish. And later, if we want to do something like set interval, we got more cone back. In this code, I haven't checked the case where the, error, uh, the network errors or we got some uh, exception in the code, but it already looks a little complex and very difficult to read. So that is the downside of cone back. It makes the code really difficult to maintain and to debug. The next thing with the cone back is sometimes we don't we don't use the function name but we just use inline function like this one and when we got an error an exception if we read uh, the log it will be really hard to know uh, what what is the exception and where it come from so uh, that is the reason why we move to the next day i mean the promise so promise it is a pattern it solves some of the problem of the callback so instead of a callback we return a promise and the promise is re represent the result of an asynchronous operation a promise can get three states pending, fulfilled, and rejected. It will be easier if I show it in the code so you can see. So let's say instead of a callback, I return a promise. A promise. When it's first created, the state is pending. And when we call the resolve here, it stays changed to resolve it. And when we reject it, by, by some errors, it will become uh, rejected. So what is the point of using a promise? So I want to make the old code, but with different styling. Uh, so instead of callback, now I return a promise. For the function, I don't need to put in a callback anymore. So let's just compare the new function with the own function. So with the own function, I need to put in a callback in the parameter. But now while writing using promise, I don't need to put in a callback anymore. And I return a promise. So in this case, the fetch is going to return a promise. And after the, the promise is resolved, I'm gonna get the result and then put it in the image. So the code assemble like this one. 
and uh, the good thing with from it is we can change the code so you see here if we got some result uh, if we got some errors during the code we can catch the error in the console log here and the promise it got the function 10 and cast the problem the problem is so uh, when we want to make sequentially code is easy really easy because the promise can be changed so let's say i can make a promise here when we return this one this will become the result of the next promise so for example another code you see here now we don't have the code back anymore because this function can be changed and from the last promise so if i run this one uh, we can see it runs sequentially, but now even if we add more, the code it looks cleaner because they are all in the same indent. All the reason why, uh, why using the promise is we got the cache here, so we can change many functions. But if in one promise uh, we got the, an error, the error will be cached in the cache statement here. When we read the error message, we can know which promise return the error, and it makes the, uh, the error handling easier too. So this one. Before we use the code back, we got the code back here and when we do the promise, the code is easier to read and easy to cut the error too. But somebody might say, what if I want to make many code at the same time? Promise, it provides some function called promise own. And what this function do is it's gonna try to run three function code at the same time. And when all three function code is finished, it's gonna be resolved and turned into one promise. Another example. So in this case, the code is not sequentially, but it's a parallel. So you see here, I try to make three code with dog, cat, and fish at the same time. And we can see the network tab. So you see here, we make three at the same time. And when we got the result, the promise is gonna be resolved into this. Okay, so uh, this is just my experience. Some of my friends already you promised, but they make some peaceful like this. So instead of changing the promise, uh, we use the cone back in the den. That's why we got the promise hell, and it's the same as the cone back hell. So if you meet this error, please return the promise and change it properly. Don't use this kind of cone back and the den function. And another one is got some function called result. This function will be called when the promise is fulfilled and the reject is gonna be called when the promise is rejected. Uh, but if we use one write the code like this, okay, where we got some error in this function, this cannot be cast we have to you add another cone so it will catch the error in the then function so why will you promise because next we will talk about a sin away and a sin away is based on promise <coughs> so you need to have a good understanding on promise to you a sin away this is the reason why will you promise it makes the code more clean so we don't actually need to put in the code back anymore and the function uh, will be easier to write and to test and for chaining up promise we don't have the code back here anymore so the next thing need the magic of a scene away so why i call it magic because if you read the each each function return promise and if they were synchronous so the thing is we are writing the asynchronous code but the code look like synchronous so just come back to the code but now you see here the code look like i will try to find an image for the cat and then set it to the image and the code look synchronous it means i'm gonna wait for this and i'm gonna do this after i got the image but this code will not block the browser at all so so i'm gonna away this one to uh, return a promise but with a scene away it will treat this one as that a synchronous function so yep another cat so this one is either code back hell and now uh, if we do it with a scene and away we get the code sequentially we just call away 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 we don't need any way code back or any then any cast promise and error handling in a way a scene away is really simple you put it in the try pack during the asynchronous code here if we got any errors it's gonna throw an exception and we can show exception here so if we want to write the code sequentially we just away code and if we want to make parallel code it treat the promise at an object so we are waiting for the promise on here so to make it easy i prepare more demo uh, this one is gonna get the image of the cast gonna get the image of the dog and the fist and it is sequentially but it doesn't block the ui as on so if we check the network here it's gonna check the you see it doesn't block the ui because on the cone are a synchronous cone but with a scene away it looks like synchronous cone so it makes our code really easier and cleaner and what if we want to make parallel code is it the same instead of code from its own then we just away the promise so this one yeah we make three code at the same time and now we got more cat <laughs> uh, and the last one is the loop this is really interesting because even with promise and code back it's really hard to write the code for the loop so let's say if you have want to write a loop with promise you have to do then and then uh, assign a new promise with another dance but i can make a simple code like this before when you use set timeout you will need to put in a code back but i change it to promise so now when we call set timeout it's gonna return a promise and will be so after ta the time we specify so the code here is gonna run for five time and we're gonna get an image assign the image to the html so you can read the code first because 
I don't use away, so it's actually asynchronous. Uh, if I click this one, you can see we can read the begin run, dog run, cat run because these two function it does not block. So we got this one first. In here, I use away, so after they run on the loop, it's gonna alert on loop finish. Uh, with a scene away, we can miss the asynchronous and synchronous code, and it looks really clean and simple. Everything looks synchronous, uh, but the thing is, the away keyword is only available in an async function. If I remove this one, we're gonna get a syntax error because this is a normal function and they don't understand what an away is. So I have to add the async keyword. And the async keyword here, let's say if I return some function, return a value, uh, it's gonna return a promise. Uh, we can actually see it syntax. Uh, this one is not gonna return file, but it's gonna return a promise. So I'm gonna try to see. Okay, a sync function. Okay, here is not a promise, and we have to wait for the promise to be resolved. Yeah, that means if we use a sync away in one player or code later or sooner, we have to put a sync away in every place. But it is show up, and we have no more callback, no more then, no more cast, and it looks synchronous code, so it's really clean and easier to debug. We can easily put a debug in here to check if this the right one. So I can try put a debug here and run it. Yep, so we see I can already get the, uh, yep, and the code, it looks really like synchronous code. Yeah, but one of the problem with a scene away it isn't support in own browser. So if you go to can I use, you can see it is a support in IE, or version of S, and in Opera Mini. So what should we do in this situation? We can use paper transpiler. It can transpire into ES file, and it's gonna put in some polyfill for generator. So the code will be able to run in IE and S. But the trade off is the code might get a little bigger because Babel are gonna add in some plugin. And if you want to know what a scene away do behind the scene, uh, don't don't think it in it's gonna transpire into some kind of like state machine. It's quite complicated, so I'm not gonna go into detail, but you can try to read the code and listen it later. Uh, looking back from the first day of JavaScript, we have a code a long way for a synchronous code. Uh, before we use code back, then uh, Angular appear and we begin to move to promise. And now everybody knows what is promise and we can move to a scene away. Uh, but still, we cannot uh, remove code back completely because we still use code back for event and subscribe and unsubscribe. So my advice is uh, you a scene away if possible. So if your job, you don't have to support own browser like IE6 or IE8. If you can just develop application for Chrome or Node.js 7 or Apple, feel free to use a scene away. Uh, but you should have a good understanding on promise. And one of the combo I like to use is some of the function in Node.js, they use the code back model. Uh, it's gonna con uh, succeed error when it's finished getting the file. So we can use the blue bug to promise this one and it's gonna become a promise and then if we co combine with a scene away we got all the code look asynchronous but actually we got the benefit of a synchronous code yeah that is thank you for listening and yeah.